word on uh, the, the, the saint that we memorialize today, St. Anthony. This was St. Anthony of the desert. As I mentioned, he was born in the third century and he, his parents died when he was 18 years old, leaving him and his little sister um, by themselves. And it wasn't too long after the death of his, his, his parents that he um, started contemplating the scriptures of um, turning in his wealth and the parents, and specifically it was Matthew, Matthew 19, if you wish to be perfect, go and sell your possessions and give them to the poor. And it was upon a day that he walked in the church and that was um, like, as that was on his mind, as he walked in the church, that was the, the scripture that was being proclaimed and he was moved to do that, he sold his estate, he gave it to the poor while still making sure that his sister was cared for. He then devoted his life to a life of, of prayer, eventually um, living as um, a hermit, going out to the desert. And what's really um, beautiful in his writings, and he's such a, he's such a spiritual giant, and uh, in, in his writings, Athanasius writes on the story of St. Anthony. And what it depicts is really the, um, like the, the spiritual battle in which that he went through. You think, okay, so he, he left everything. He devoted his life to prayer. I know he, he left all like worldly distractions. Like what could be the, what could be the, the battle for him? And it really lays out the spiritual battle um, which the catechism talks about, and we know to be the case just in our day-to-day -day life. It's like, hey, things can be going well, and then there can be an onslaught with like listening to lies. It can be the times of consolation where our hearts feel really close to God, and then times of desolation can come the next day. And I just want to read a, a little um, section from Athanasius's um, book that he wrote on the life of St. Anthony. He says that, so after, you know, so St. Saint, Saint Anthony leaves, and he says, but the devil who hates and envies what is good could not endure to see such a resolution. So St. Anthony made this resolution, he goes off. And so he says, but he endeavored to, the devil, endeavored to carry out against him torments. First of all, he tried to lead him away from the discipline, whispering to him the remembrance of his wealth, care for his sister, Claims of kindred, love of money, love of glory, the various pleasures of the table, and the other relaxations of life, and at last the difficulty of virtue and the labor of it. So notice, like some of these things, it's like are even good things. His right, his the care for his sister, but he had already discerned right that like the Lord was leading him to go away, but the whisper, the whispering of the evil one of kind of just enticing him, trying to throw him off, trying to leave his, like to, to change from the resolve of which he um, set out to do. Goes on, he says, he suggests the devil also suggested also the infirm infirmity of the body and the length of the time. In a word, he raised in his mind a great dust of debate, wishing to debar him from his settled purpose. There's, there's a, if you've been in my office, I have a, a painting of kind of this scene. It's, um, it's a, a work of Michelangelo called The Torment of St. Anthony. And St. Anthony's there, and it's got like all just these little demons that are around St. Anthony. I think there's 11, 12 of them. And what, what's striking is the fact that Anthony's face is just so locked in in a spot of peace. He's so locked in, like firm, or we might say he's anchored, which brings me to the close of, I mean, it's beautifully St. Anthony falls coincidentally on this day that we hear from this section in the, he in the letter of the Hebrews. It says part of the thing that Rick, um, Rick read was this. So when God wanted to give the heirs of his promise, which who's the, who's the heir of his promise? It's, it's us. When God wanted to give the heirs of his promise an even clearer demonstration of the immutability of his purpose, right? That's God's promises, that he doesn't change, that his promises don't change, even in the midst of 
trials and torments and difficulties. What does it say? He intervened. God intervened. So that by the immutable things in which it was possible for God to, which it was impossible to God, for God to lie, we who have been taken refuge might be strongly encouraged to hold fast to the hope that lies before us. This we have as an anchor of the soul, sure and firm, which, which reaches into the interior behind the veil. We are anchored by the promises of God, especially in the times of torment especially in times when the evil one whispers to try to have us derailed from maybe the, the, the resolutions that we make. And this was St. Anthony. St. Anthony was anchored to a person. St. Anthony, in the midst of everything, his hope was anchored, as, as it says, so that he had firm anchor of soul, sure and firm, which reaches into the interior behind the veil. Like that's the spot we want to live. That's the spot we yearn to live. But it's only possible if we, if we, if we really, if we're anchored by a person and we're anchored by his promises, we're heirs to his promises. The good father has promises and the good father doesn't put promises out there and says, well, these aren't for you. There's immutability of his purpose, the letter of Hebrew says. So as we, as we head off today, as we enter into this Eucharist, the question is like, am I anchored? Or what am I anchored in? Am I anchored into a person? Right? And, then, and then, 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 then it's a movement to, Lord, help me be anchored in you. Help me, as the letter of the Hebrew says, so that I may have, so I may be sure and firm so that I can have peace of soul. And I can even take that resolution of St. Anthony as the evil ones as Michelangelo depicted like that are all around him. He's anchored because he's anchored in a person and the Father's promises.